Nothing to hold that ball. You're gonna do real damage. You might drop the guy with one punch. But your aim is here and bring the same hand. When he gets in, he's liable to bring it down. Even if he's coming, he's liable to bring it down. Bang! Over here. Bang! With the left hook here, over here. My name, my name is Custom Motto. And I live in Catskill, New York. In this program, the task we set in front of us is to provide evidence-based demonstration of what was Casdemata's system capable of. What stands behind efficiency in manageable creation of absolute world champions out of the simple, timid and weak boys? Book by Larry Sloman, Iron Ambition, and I'd say it's better to perceive the book exactly in this way, Iron Ambition. Well, you know, it's a completely different story. It grabbed my attention so much that I devoured literally in several hours. This figure is so mythical. As for today world, well, they know so little about him. Yeah, we know Mike Tyson. We applaud him. What Mike did? Just take a look at his knockouts. That's a parishion. People always admire things that they cannot repeat. However, Casdamato, that's the figure you can talk about on and on and on and on. I have been studying the activity of Kuzdamato for more than 20 years, starting in 1990 and with the publication of the book Boxing, Money and Pigeons on to the present year of 2017. His approach to combat is unique in itself. The special philosophy of the peekaboo style developed by Kuzdamato is not similar to any other. His knowledge about human nature, human memory, learning, skills, as well as how to achieve results in different fields and how to achieve them in a short and effective way is awe-inspiring. For Mike Tyson, we're back in Albany. We're back for a moment number three. Because the matter knew how to spark an individual, he knew how to give such an impulse so that people just could not stop. Oh, so I started from here. I'm some guy robbing houses and mugging people. The next thing you know, hey, we champ of the world. You know, it came out just like that. Just as I'm explaining it to you, just meteoric speed click click juvenile detention guy robber he reach champ of the world that quick so here is Cus, and on the other side there is a certain 15 year old creature with a horrific criminal background and that creature just in several years becomes a figure a star a champion on worldwide scale so what stands behind that state of affairs what stands behind that champion when whole world stands up in applause and enchants your name? There must be something behind that, right? With 27 wins, no defeats, 25 KOs, he is the challenger, Mike Tyson. Other people are not able to do what he did. They cannot do it by any sort of mystique or by psychology or other science. But Cuz was able to do it. If we look at his career, we see that he delivered results time and time again. One example being that he was able to take a boy who he took to his house to train and nurture who then became the world champion in boxing. None of the coaches achieved so many results in boxing as Cuz D'Amato did. Why don't you ask yourself, could be the fact that one person, Constantine D'Amato, designing three champions of the world in boxing be a coincidence? How was he able to do that? Strike the corpus, all my life, all my future, everything I have ever wanted in life. After that fight, I was happy that I didn't know what to do. I knew that Cus would be proud of me if he saw that I won the fight. We have talked with him so much about this. I'd like to devote this fight to my great trainer, Cus D'Amato. I'm sure he's looking from above and talking with the greatest boxers and saying that his boy did it. 
Because Damato is now dead, and nobody can repeat the same success. If there are ones who are talking about their capabilities of doing it, ask them, what's the problem? Can you take a guy from prison and make him the absolute world heavyweight boxing champion? What keeps you from doing it? Can you demonstrate to everyone that your experience, your knowledge and capabilities are superior to that of Kaz Damato? And can you repeat that four times? What this person believed in? What was his life like? How it turned out that Kaz became an outstanding coach, unbelievable public official and a man with such a business hunter mindset? Well. It's less like likely that you'll find another persona that would be comparable with this figure. No offense, you know Tyson writes in the book straightforwardly. Quote, it was some sort of demon shit, but I believed it, cause it worked. If a trainer was able to produce a world boxing champion, that was able to defend his title several times, he would be considered a brilliant trainer. Cuz was able to accomplish that feat three times. Feel, see? And holding your foot. Now you're only lifting it up. Just experiment until you finally get the right spot. As soon as you get the right spot, you'll know. Let me present the first expert of our program, Larry Sloman. His nick is Ratso. He is a New York-based writer of bestsellers. He is the author of two books about Mike Tyson and Kaz D'Amato. The first book of his is titled as Undisputable Truth. This book is devoted to Mike Tyson's whole life. As for the second book, Iron Ambition, it is about the life of Kaz D'Amato. The publisher said, can you do a second book? And, um, and I said, we, we did a 500-something page book uh, that covered Mike's life up to the present. What, what are we going to do? Mike's wife said, why don't you do a book about the relationship of Mike and Cus? So we didn't know exactly um, at first how to do the book. Um, you know, we didn't know. We didn't want to do like a typical self-help book. So. I came up with the idea of that, that, you know, that the only way you could understand Mike's relationship with Cus would be to understand Cus, you know, how he got to that point when he first met Mike. I have to point out that Larry has described the relationship of Mike Tyson and Cus D'Amato in a rather straightforward manner. It was very particular, mutual, unbeatable union of two people. They had an exact mission. Mike Tyson and Constantine D'Amato together against the whole world. With me. But I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot. He doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. If he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing and doing as well as he's doing and improving as he has gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer want to live. But I have a reason with Mike, and he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive, and I will watch him become a success. Because I will not leave until that happens. Mike would wake up in the middle of the night and sense that there was cuss around. He used to open his eyes, but Cass was not there. And then he would find out that Cass, in fact, was nearby, somewhere in the kitchen. He'd say, oh, Mike, you woke up? I was just thinking about you. Uh, I got something to tell you, come over. If you ain't sleeping, let's talk. This authority, this power, this mysticism, all of that was simultaneous. I would like to ask some questions related to the legends about Cus D'Amato and their truthfulness. The first being, is it true that Cus D'Amato was never a boxer himself? He developed his, his techniques just from watching other people in, in, the, in, the, in the ring and other trainers. But he never, like, Cus, ne Cus never had a, a, a former tutor. 
He was the first person in the history of boxing to bring science and training. He was the first person who used scientific approaches in boxing. He was a great scientist in his field, by which I mean the field of boxing. People would apply scientific methods as in others type of sports, but not in boxing. In professional American boxing, what was used is experience. They used experience instead of a science, so people learned from one each other. As it is said in the US, learning by doing. They studied with those who are around them. The same was done by Cuz, but he has many questions and no answers, so he read a lot to find the answers. I'll dare to mention that this man had no education. I mean, we're not talking about Harvard, Oxford, Yale. This man is a self-taught man. I mean, he had no president-level consultants or something of the sort, but he was all by himself. He did not belong to certain community. He did not pursue certain activity. He was all by himself in every sense of this word. He posed those kinds of questions that no one knew the answers for, and he used to look for these answers by the method of self-education. He read books, many books. He had a huge library. And, and he would, you know, he would pull in ideas from the books he read and then, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, modify his own beliefs and his own teachings based on what he read. So, yeah, it's very possible. We found out that Kazdamara used to read a wide range of books. Books on karate written by Funakoshi, books on psychology, he was absolutely convinced in the fact that the unseen, mystical, is the most significant thing in the life of a human being. Kandamara read books as well as on politics, books of famous political scientists, American and European ones. Kandamara used to read about human body, power of thoughts, about hypnosis. Damata loved history. He gave his students books about great conquerors that if not for Cass, it is less likely that Mike would find out about such figures such as Alexander Macedonian, Alexander the Great. And this was the very example used by Cass to show what it meant to conquer the world and to be remembered in ages as a warrior, a champion, a winner with the guidance of your teacher's word. That's it. See, ain't no way he's gonna hit you down, right? And remember, it's always good to throw the punch where you could hit him and he can't hit you. That's what the science of boxing is all about. Remember, from the side, you can let that punch go with the worst kind of intention because you know he can't hit you back. It should be noted that Kazdemara was a big critic. He would always find a thing which could be done better. Discipline was of importance to him. That was the foundation. As Mike Tyson says, he used to demand more than a human discipline. However, obviously that is very ground and reason of an achievement. You know, this guy, in order to make me this guy who people think I am, this guy broke me down, man. This guy is not like this guy's talking. This guy broke me down, you know, and then he had, now he has a, um, a blackboard. Now he could do whatever he wants with it. He could design whatever kind of fight he, yeah, he's talking about my character and my discipline and he, I didn't know what discipline was, so he explained to that. Discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it to do. Yeah. Keep the head down when you come up with the H, keep your head down. It's coming up. Yeah, it's not coming up, but it's starting to come up. You can make it perfect. Move your head, Mike. You gotta screw a punch when you get it. That's a screw a punch when you're doing the arm. We trained him steadily. When he got to the point where he slipping punches, we had a difficult time getting people to box with him because he proved to be a very hard punch with both hands. In your opinion, what led to Mike Tyson becoming a world champion in boxing? I think, um, first of all, Mike is, uh, is extremely intelligent. He's not, he's not schooled, he's not, you know, he, he doesn't have a lot of, he didn't have a lot of education, but he's a very smart guy. And he, and he had a tremendous amount of discipline, and discipline was everything to Cus. Without a doubt, the greatest pupil Cus ever had. Cus D'Amato had an extremely non-conventional approach in choosing fighters. People used to consider him to be an eccentric, crazy man. So picture this, a manager, 
because Demata could have asked a boxer to leave the gym forever just because he didn't like something in his attitude. Imagine a situation when Kazdemaro, while choosing a fighter, asked in the first place, what is your astrological sign? When they come to the gym, I have to give them to the talk about fear, and I tell them fear is their best friend. And many kids, many kids don't even know, I tell them, do you know the difference between being afraid and being yellow, or the difference between a hero and a coward? Well, they give me answers, but they weren't accurate. And I tell them there's no difference between a hero and a coward at all, in how they feel, but it's what they do that makes a difference. That's what makes the difference between a hero and a coward. What is the difference between a hero and a coward? There is no difference, not in what they, uh, it's just that not the way they feel, they feel the same. That's how it makes fear bother them, is No, 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 more specifically. I would like to talk about those peculiarities that I found with Cus D'Amato. And a hero, there's no, they're, they're the same, I mean, they feel the same. It's what they do that makes it different. In other words, the hero feels just as frightened as the coward. Yeah. But it's what he does that makes him different. It's what he does that makes him a hero, and what the other fellow doesn't do that makes him a coward. When people were engaged in boxing, they had a certain approach. This approach was one of three types. There is the European boxing school. I would call it an Italian school, although there were no boxing schools in Italy. But according to fencing approach, I would call it so. The Spanish boxing school and the northern school of boxing. What is the difference, you may ask? Well, they differ in their approach. If you take Muhammad Ali, what comes to mind is his principle, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That is, he moved around an opponent in a so-called circular method. He moved around an opponent and hit him from different sides. The circular method is characteristic of the Spanish school of fencing. They work using the circle in this school. They do not prefer to go directly to an opponent, or to go to the clinch, or to go in a straight line. Instead, they act in such a way where they occupy certain positions on the circle. This does not allow an opponent to attack the fighter, but it allows the fighter to attack their opponent. There is an Italian direction, I call it so. When opponents come together in line and fight on the line, if you take books on boxing, you will see fighters standing opposite one of another putting the defense and trying to deliver blows to each other. That is, the position of opponents takes place on a line. The third school is more particular to the German and French schools. These are the schools where we have all sorts of branches of boxing. And it is known in French boxing that they use kicks, punches, elbow strikes, and sometimes you can use wrestling, sometimes not, depending on the direction from the school. What we get later are different types of combats, such fights without rules, mixed martial arts, and so on with each requiring and demanding different rules and tactics. In fact, if you count, there are two directions in boxing, Spanish and Italian fencing schools. If you look at how different people box, you will see that some people play with distance. The blow is missed, the fighter closes the distance, and then counter strikes. And there are those who prefer working by means of circle, It could be said that modern boxing takes its origin from fencing. If some doubt this, then please have a look at the library on boxing from 1402 to 1979. Go through all the books that were published in Europe at the time. You will see that originally, people used to do fencing and boxing at the same time. Then fencing goes to second plan, and what is left, only boxing. But earlier, all were engaged in wrestling, boxing, and fencing at the same time. There was a moment at the turn of the 18th century when it was all wrestling, boxing, and fencing, as well as stick training and baston fencing. If we remind ourselves of the roots of Cus D'Amato, his family origins, then we can recall that he had Apulian roots, which is in the territory of Spain many years ago, maybe 600 or more. His peekaboo system has a direct Spanish origin. The first thing that catches the eye if you open the first Venetian treaties of Giganti, you will notice he talks about a certain footwork. If you look at the work of Mike Tyson and what D'Amato says, this Venetian pattern of footwork remains in the peekaboo style throughout the life of D'Amato.
The history of these stances is worth noting. In Padua, near Venice, there was a man, Francesco Alfieri, who wrote an interesting document on fencing. He had great respect for all the masters of that time, which was the 16th century. Nevertheless, he introduced his own stance, which was called the fifth position, and by mere coincidence, this stance is exactly the same as that of the peekaboo. He recognized the merits of each individual master, of their documents, and for their contribution to fencing. My trainer taught me that common boxing way, this way is fine, as you can reach more. But my trainer taught me to fight this way, frontally. Everything related on speed, coordination, and power. All that matters are several seconds. In the peekaboo style, you keep your hands over here, near the chin. When we speak of the Italian city, Palermo, it should be mentioned that they have a Palermidan style of combat. And they have a particularly useful block in the Palermidan style, which is barehanded work against a bladed weapon. And the way in which they stand is exactly the same, except that in this case the hands are in this position. And it makes sense, because if you kept them this way, they will be cut. Usual stance in boxing is usually this one. You put forward your left hand, but I was taught to deliver blows right from the chin, which makes situation more tough, as it's hard for you to reach an opponent. So the tactics were about jumping in with a series of strikes, shifting to sides and speed. It is not just a stance. It is a whole system that needs to be carried out. If you just stand in the stance, there is no point. For D'Amato, the concept of the stance includes not only the position of the body, but the whole complex series of actions that must be taken from this stance. This includes the footwork, the work of the corpus, the work of the head, hands, and so on, exits to the angles of attack, and so on. It is comprehensive and complex. It is a whole machine, not just a stance of the body. To speak about father of Casidemaro, his dad was born in Italy. He was Italian, in the city of Bari, in the Apulian region. And the first thing which comes to mind about Apulia, it is a heart of Italian criminal tradition, Ndrangheta. This is the place of troubles in central Italy, of rebellions. They say that this is the place where people are born with a knife in their hands. Nevertheless, Casidemaro's father was not a gangster. He used to do wrestling. Casdemaro himself was born in U.S., New York, Bronx, in January 17, 1908. He had an uncle who had sparked his interest in boxing, as it is believed. Not only in him, but in his brothers. There was a holiday and he gave everyone boxing gloves as a present. And from this very moment, he began his career, as it is said. Just think what it was like in time of Great Depression. People. I mean, they struggled even with food. And needless to say that in that period of time, you have flourished of criminality. And kids started following those who could teach them at least doing something, who could teach you at least to get a slice of bread. Here we're talking about robbery, and other attacks, and persecution, and so on. And just think, exactly in those times, for some reason, in Grace Mercy opens a boxing gym for Casdemato. That's extremely odd act. I mean, there is no way you'd find an explanation to this. Imagine there is a man of Italian descent who had a difficult childhood. It wasn't poverty, as his parents earned well, but it was still hard. It is a man who had a serious eye injury as a result of a street fight. So he himself could not box. He had this eye injury. A man who was well practiced in the Italian fencing tradition there is a story, and it is real. When Cuz was called to a knife fight, he came, but the opponents did not show up. This story is quite well known. 
We asked an author who had written about Tyson whether this story was true, and he said it was true indeed. There are many moments associated with this pathological invulnerability. There was a moment when he was invited to a particular meeting, and in the framework of this meeting there had to be a talk with one of the first persons of criminality. And Cass obviously knew that the talk would be a tough one. I mean, you do understand that you might not come back. So what Cass did? Well, usually people prepare for negotiations, just like writing things down, making calculations like plus, minus. But what Cass did? He said, took a deep breath, relaxed, and imagined that he was in a certain kind of room. It was a round room with 12 doors, and there was that very criminal inside. And Cass saw the following as he told Mike. He could not understand why, but he saw that very criminal in that room. The criminal wanted to get out from that room. You'd say you'd crave for it. And every time that criminal opened one of the doors, there was no exit. So again, he opens one door, there is a brick wall. He opens the second door, the third door, the fourth door, the fifth, till the twelfth door. And then, when he opens the twelfth door, the only one which is an exit, and he just steps out, there is Casdemato with his sword, and he chops his head off. That's the way how Casdemato prepared for negotiations. And you know, what has happened the very next day? Everything went smoothly, as if there was a smooth scenario written. People used to ask how? What did you tell him? And Kaz was like, what's important is not what I said, but what was in the end. Let me turn your attention towards religious preference of Casdemato. He was a Catholic, but at a certain period in his life, he faced a tough situation, which made him completely doubt and be disappointed in the religion. Early in his life, became a very strict Catholic. He was he was born in a Catholic family. Uh, early in his life, he became a very very uh, devout Catholic, but. After his brother died, it was his brother was one of the brothers that he idolized uh, was killed by a cop, and the church and the, the and the priests did nothing to protest the fact that his brother had been killed. So he just disavowed uh, Catholicism from that day on. And, and hated religion. You know, I guess everything starts in life from that point, from a deep disappointment in religion, from a man's disappointment in those sad things that are inscripted in your consciousness since you're a child, a teenager, then as a young character which has to achieve things and tries to get shaped into a figure. That's the way victories of Casdemato has started with. They commence from this type of the period in life. But we, perceive those victories as strangeness and it because we have no idea how that can be done. I know that you know everybody and I know you know exactly what they can do. You know all the best punches they have and I know you make a point to memorize them as fighters. So I know that you know how to handle them. I know that you have an answer for anything that they may try to do for you or with you. So that uh, I, can, I think the outcome is predictable, uh, favorably predictable, myself. Of course, I know you feel that way, even though you may not say so, but I know you feel that way, which is the important thing. You know, the man should have the confidence that his ability will not be denied, especially when you know what your ability is. Nobody can, you know, to con you or anything like that, but if you know what you can do. As soon as he met me and saw me box, he started it's a crazy guy. He started um he started planning my whole career and my whole life out. I was gonna win the nationals, we're gonna win the local tournament here, we're gonna win this tournament here, we're gonna win this one, you're gonna win Olympic trials, then we're gonna get you the heavyweight champion, we're gonna get a million dollars in your first fight as a pro, then we're gonna get you into the heavyweight 
champions. We will build you, we will we'll fight you constantly, and we will make you the youngest heavyweight champ in the world. And um, for some weird reason, um, I was only 13. I didn't want to appear that I was afraid. And he said, are you ready for the job at hand? And I said, yes, I am. But I had no idea what he had in store. I had no idea. I um, just didn't know. I was so ignorant. And yes, I used to ignorant little kid that thought I knew it all. I didn't want him to think I, I wanted to... I want them to think I was tough. I was only 13. Let us talk about an outstanding capability of Kazdamara to really understand people. The person we are speaking about is the one who designed three champions of the world. Three time demonstration to the whole world of what his methodology is capable of. Jose Torres, Floyd Patterson and his best fighter Mike Tyson are great with evidences to that. Now and in 20th century, if a coach could get one fighter to become a star, a champion, that's already an applause, a respect. But Koss had demonstrated that he could repeat that. He did it three times. That is, what provides grounds to think already that actually one must have an approach, one must have methodology. I mean, here is Koss. Here is 15-year-old creature with horrific criminal background. And that creature, just in several years, becomes a figure, a star, a champion for worldwide scale. So what stands behind that state of affairs and this very champion? When whole world stands up in applause and chants your name, there must be something behind that, right? There was one time when Mike Tyson was telling the story of how Cuz D'Amato and Rooney had come up with something new. There were many opinions about how to train for a knockout blow. And D'Amato, along with Rooney, came up with something new. They bought several boxing bags for the gym. They all looked the same, but one was much heavier than the other one. And Tyson never knew which bag he was going to hit that day. They used to put the bags up before Tyson came into the gym. And this constant change of bags and not knowing which weight he was going to hit is, in Cuz D'Amato's opinion, what developed this knockout blow. He could hang a bag for training that is three times heavier than Tyson himself. Or he could hang the bag that was 70 kilograms, which is 20 kilograms lighter than Tyson. Rooney would change the bags, and Tyson actually refused to do weightlifting because D'Amato said that this is not the way to get the knockout blow. It can be done by this method of constantly training with different bags. The method of changing the bags that Cuz came up with not only developed knockout blows for Tyson, but terrific death blows. I mean, he would knock guys out right from the first strike. The method of the rendered sleep, which he applied, for people who don't know, Tyson would have to get up at 4 a.m. and go running, and Rooney would bicycle alongside, and then he'd come back home and go to bed. No one could have asked him, why make him run exactly at 4 a.m. and then come home in two hours or less and go to bed at 6 a.m.? Well, no one knows. No one can explain why Cuz made him so. And Rooney had to get up every morning <laughs> at 4 a.m. and bicycle while Tyson is running. Why can't we run at 6 a.m.? Why at 4 a.m.? But Cuz D'Amato says no, you gotta get up at 4 a.m. Such mysticism. You don't run at 3 a.m., you don't run at 5 a.m., you run at 4 a.m. Cuz had quite a lot of oddities and peculiarities, and people cannot explain this up till now. Why did he do this or that? And he used to constantly innovate things. I mean, every day he had something new. Things that he studied, things that he used. He immediately tested and experimented it in the gym. And if it produced results, then he used it. If it did not give a result, then he looked at it in a different way, tried it again, and if it did not work again, then he threw it away because it really did not work in any sense. Then again, a new experiment. Well, he used to constantly experiment in the gym. Correspondingly, the result of this experiment nurtured the peekaboo style. Moreover, all of the experiments were based on demonstrations, which is a peculiarity of fencing Demonstration is a method of fencing. This is the Spanish method of fencing. Everything is comprehended through a demonstration. And Cuz used this way as a main method of carrying through the experiments. Let's try! 
Then he showed a demonstration and the guy would understand what the trainer wanted from him and how to do it. It ought to be mentioned that Kazdemara was a genius in his approach while working with people. He knew exactly how to work with this or that person. Unquestionably, his approach was a remarkably atypical one. There is a story linked to Floyd Patterson. This man, when he just came to Casdemato, was quite timid and weak guy. And in the boxing industry, there was no man who was able to create conditions so that Floyd Patterson becomes a world champion. But Cass did that. There is a story which tells us and vividly shows us Kazdemara's special approach. So here were trainings and after workout, as you'd understand, sportsmen have to pay very close attention to the personal hygiene. So the case was that Cass did understand that at that point of time, Floyd Patterson would not be able to handle if he was set right in the face by Cass. Floyd, you get a shower. So what Cass did, he told him this by means of other people. I mean, there was another boxer, Floyd Patterson and Cass Damato. So Cass would tell the other guy that he should shower as there will be trainings going on. Needless to say, Floyd would understand that he has to shower too. But pay attention to how Cass Damato acted towards his boxer. He knew how a human person was built to the very detail. Surely, he had a knowledge not possessed by other people. What should be said about Kazdemato as a scientist? His close comrades say that he brought more than just a scientific approach in boxing. He was the first person who brought a physical science. But besides that, he is the first person who used physical sciences as an approach to boxing, but besides this, he introduced a second scientific element. He was the first who introduced psychology to boxing. Up till this point, nobody had seriously looked at psychology in boxing. Cuz D'Amato made everyone take this seriously. He showed the results a first time, and then a second time with the world champion, and then Mike Tyson appeared. When a person achieves outstanding results three times, and that's a result in boxing. This is a current world heavyweight champion. There are no other results in boxing. There are champions. And because D'Amato knew how to forge out these champions, he believed that psychology played a fundamental role in this. The reason is a person does not understand what he is doing in the beginning. And one has to make him work and make him win a fight against a strong man. A strong opponent, that is not easy, especially in the world of professional boxing. Imagine following situations. For instance, Kass used to sit near the window and look outside. And he'd say, these people will do whatever I say now. So he would give commands mentally, that's how he trained. Like he would think that that man would go and sit on bench now. And yeah, he'd go and sit on the bench. He thought, okay, this guy who is walking the, with a dog will approach the girl and ask her name. And he would do so. Or one more example, he would say, okay, two minutes and people will start leaving the park. And yeah, people started leaving the park, even though it was weekend day. There were multiple times confirmed, and not only by Mike, that Kass had a capability of making someone act using the power of thoughts. Moreover, people would carry out his command just the way Kass has projected. Just think that a man can make people act by means of thoughts. And Kass has repeated that for numerous times. There were moments when his fighters were just on the edge, like last seconds on ring and they are running out of impulse. So you need that final decision making powerful blow in order to get that win and not to outscore but to that show knockout and in that moment Kass would just have a look and that fighter he could not even explain himself he would be just filled up with energy and there would be terrifying unexpected blow we can't explain this but that thing existed and it does exist today
him, you should have this. Uh, you could beat him. You're better than him. Not and not that you could be better if you work hard. You could be better. And you could also achieve good things. You're better than him. This and that. And why should he have that? And you shouldn't have that. Why? Why should he be better than you? And I never would. And that was, and I was intimidated. They would say because it would say it really forceful. Because D'Amato applied psychology, which borders on mysticism, this man was not just mystical, he introduced this mysticism into boxing. According to this, Cuz D'Amato was very different and continues to differ from all boxing trainers and from all managers in boxing. Cuz D'Amato was capable of using this mysticism to forge champions. For instance, Cuz would make Mike step out of his body. He said, imagine projection of yourself outside. See how this projection smiles, see how it delivers blows, see how it goes outside and smiles to that girl, see how that girl comes up to that 13-year-old old guy and slaps him into face. And look, this projection is called a role. Now bring it back, change it, let's try another one, one more role, and so on and so on. He was considered a huge hoax of boxing, no one would understand him. He was criticized and everyone wrote about him in the newspaper and so on. People do not understand this man in the community of boxing, including the National Boxing Association. He fought with them all his life. It was his credo, the war with the U.S. Boxing Association. How Cass were able to find those people who would really be able to organize fights? How was he able to find right partners and go against the whole system? I mean, how did this one man was capable of completely reshaping this monopolistic, revengeful, demon-like figure? No one knows. And it used to go on for quite long. I mean, this combat, fighting, just on the edge of life and death, it had continued for at least 20 years. Besides, there were very hard court procedures. Again, you have to understand, there is a huge difference between how we organize our professional activity and the way it is done in America. In America, having a license is top significance. Your license is your ticket, it is your way through this life. And if you got no ticket in the form of a license, well, then you have no right to take the bus of your career. Got no license of a doctor? You've got no right. Even if you're one thousand times superb doctor, things won't work out. The same thing is about boxing. If you got no license for coaching, promoting, organizing, then you can't be doing that activity. When one gets his license taken away, that's the most horrible thing that can be done. In order to ruin his career, tie up his hands, spit in the face and say, try living this way, try living this life. So the legal cases were very hard. Even though Cas D'Amato had top professional attorneys, indeed his close friends, not many, but they were outstanding. Having said this, unfortunately, even they, these dearest friends were not able to resist million and million investment made by people who wanted to ruin Cas D'Amato. So they took D'Amato's license away. Under such circumstances, another would just crack and show the white flag. But Cas, he demonstrated that titles, positions in society, statuses, they just do not matter in this life. But what really matters is your achievement and people you create. Well, isn't that mystic? No way, you'd say. But what kind of psychological credo is this? What kind of teaching is this? That pushes you forward and brings you any way to success, no matter what outer world is trying to do with you. Cass was unbeatable. He is indeed iron. He is made of steel, which does not bend, does not crush. I mean that he was a person 30 heads higher rather than the rest of the crowd. There is no second man as Kazdemara in the whole history. There is no such trainer. There is no such hand of a master. There is no such a second magician who was capable to the impossible. There would be a phenomenal specialist, a scientist, a boxing trainer who will be able to make four champions then I think everyone would be talking about him 
as they did about Kuz D'Amato. But note that he did not just make two world boxing champions, he made the youngest world boxing champions twice. When his first boxing champion received the title, he was slightly more than 20. It is known that this was the youngest world champion in boxing. He was younger than the first champion. He did not just make a world champion. As people say, we built a long and finally built. He did it for a limited period of time, because probably it was possible to train a long time and make a man a champion at 28 years old and get out of boxing. Saying to everyone, I am a champion and I'm leaving, but he made the most young champion and Tyson then defended the title seven times. He made the youngest champion in the world, therefore the merit of him not only in the fact that he created this style and achieved results. His merit is that he was able to do it in a short period of time. And on the other hand, these people were the youngest in the National Boxing Association. Towards them, he acted as a boxing guru. They were outstanding people. When it comes to Tyson, note that he lost his first fight when D'Amato was not alive. To say that D'Amato is guilty of Tyson's losses is impossible. Tyson himself says that if D'Amato were alive, quote, I would never get off the world champion's podium, never. I was 14. I took part in Youth Olympics as I believe it was in 80s. I won. I set records. Tell me what you'll do tomorrow. I'll get on the ring, deliver a jab to head and eight punches into body, then shift and again punches into body. What you'll do after punches? I won them all. I won all fights with knockouts in the first round. I set the record. That was a knockout in eight seconds. I believe that is the most rapid knockout in the history. How are you doing? I'll relax, otherwise I'll have more headache. Okay. Think of the person who is confident that he wants to deal only with ones who is passionate about becoming a champion. I mean, this man is one who forges out champions. Can you find out an explanation to this? And the ones who think in terms of such categories? We don't see them. And when we talk about Kuss, we say that he was able to do it three times in a row. Kuss was not interested in money. He was interested only in world champions. Not until you hold that bro. You're gonna do real damage. You might drop the guy with one punch. But you aim it here and bring the same hand when he hits you, he's able to bring it down. Even if he's able to bring up pain. In common perception, boxing coach is someone who makes you jump a lot, run a lot, box a lot and do other things. It's quite striking, but was Kuss started from? Well, it was not all this. In the book written together with Mike Tyson and Larry Sluman, it is explicitly stated that it all started from long discourses and discussions. For some reason, it was important to cause prior to start someone doing and thinking and understanding the reason, the reason for which he's going to fight. That is, before fighting with someone, one had to realize the reason for that very fight. The essence of these talks were about Cus genuinely believing that Mike will become a champion. He used to say, I do believe that you can do it. There was no other one who used to believe in Mike as Cus did. And Mike says this himself. No one believed in him as Cus did. It can't be said as well in this type of faith were related not only to Mike Tyson. We know that Cus had nurtured two other champions, and he used to treat all his boys in this manner. Could you imagine how many boxers were brought up by Kos? Actually, no one knows how many there were. No one knows how many people Kos was able to bring up and show them to the light of this world. Deal with people. I know how to deal with people now. Before, I just couldn't. I couldn't talk to people. I used to always want to be alone. I, and now I learned how to deal with anyone. I could talk to anyone, even about their problems. And it's like a father and son relationship. You know, even though he is my manager and trainer. The first day he even met me. The first day he met me. He took me in his house, he didn't even know me. I can't say honestly, I have a very deep affection for him, I do. To me, he's my boy, he's with me. But I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot, and he doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. If he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. 
the fact that he is here and doing what he's doing and doing as well as, in, as he's doing and improving as he has gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer wants to live. But I have a reason with, with Mike here and he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive and I will watch him become a success because I will not leave until that happens. Here we see a man not in power, not one indulging in money and luxury, a figure who has got real friends. He is Italian, and that means he is not that respected. In some areas at those times he got even worse than a nigger. There were people trying to kill him. He got hated in South, West, East. People wrote nonsense about him, made pamphlets, threw mud, but he, he nurtured and managed to bring up three world champions. This must be something that stands behind his capability. Probably things we call strange, mystic. Well, it is that very substance that lets you transform one who is incapable and ignorant into a real champion. And this is such an enigma. Well, you know, <laughs> the book not only it grabbed my genuine attention of the reader, I was amused and astonished by this book. And surely, my huge gratitude to Mike Tyson and Larry Sloman, you guys made an outstanding book. My name, my name is Custom Model. I live in Catskill, New York. We begin the series of documentary movies about legendary figure Custom Model. What made it possible to create absolute champions of this world? There was no man who was able to repeat the same thing. What kind of knowledge did Casa possess? What kind of method did he apply?